Howdy folks. Take the gum out. Be a little bit more respectful of y'all. Welcome to my new digs, my new abode. I'm sitting in my chair. Already took a nap in it earlier. Man, did I sleep deeply. Um, don't think I can show you much of it from here, but I got a nice tall window right behind me. You can see there's some soft lighting. And I know it's looking a little on the pink side, but these are Desert Southwest colors. This decor was done so long ago, it just astounds me because it feels so present day, or at least it's modern day enough for me. There's the chair, and it's dark outside. I'm relaxing here outside my housekeeper's house, putting her to work. She's doing some deep cleaning, and hopefully we'll get this thing cleaned up before I move everything in and junk it up. So while it's bare bones and empty, and no, I'm not going to show it to you just yet, but it's nice. I really found this was home. It just appealed to me so much. I just couldn't, couldn't, I couldn't refuse it in several ways. And I took a trip across to California to pick it up. Pretty much on nerve's edge because you know these long distance trips. And I haven't had much good luck with California, but these guys. One of the brothers is from New York, and they're pretty straight shooters over there. And it was kind of awkward at moments. It really was, because, well, you know, there's matters of trust. And even Chase puts holes on their own cashier's checks. It's just incredible how a cashier's check has so little, so little, well, cashability, to be honest with you. Everybody still wants cash, and I didn't like handling that much cash at all. I didn't like having to count it. I had to do two major transactions and the counting went off on one of those. It was going to go in my favor a couple hundred dollars, but it's so much money and I don't need to, I just want to be fair. I don't want to take advantage of anybody. I don't want to short anybody. I want to make sure that I'm paying my old bill on full, but yet here I am using this phony money to pay the bill, which means it's never discharged. So if you really want to take this system down, if you really want your freedom and you want your country back, do the March of Dimes, the March of Silver Dimes. Go buy yourself junk silver. It's called junk because it's only got 90% silver in it. It's got no numismatic value in it. And uh, I mean, and, and the coins have got a lot of wear on them. You know, some of the metal's not quite there even, but we generally trust it. It's recognizable. And when this economy comes down, people aren't going to want to take your silver rounds. They won't even want to take your silver eagles. It's like, well, I can't trust that. I can't take that kind of a loss, but I can take a chance on a silver dime. You know, if you give me a bad silver dime, I can withstand that loss. But if you give me a bad silver dollar, it just might wreck more than my day. So get yourself silver dimes and take them off the market as fast as you can. The sooner you get those in your own hands and off the market, the sooner this, the system comes to shake. And now remember that the Savior was sold out for 30 pieces of silver. And the price on a slave was only 15 pieces of silver. Oh, that one prophet had to go buy his wife back from a house of prostitution or from her dad or something. And he paid only 15 pieces to get her back. What was that? I want to say Habakkuk, but it's not that. It's a different name. It's a minor prophet. And his, his wife was, uh, well, he was told to marry a woman of the streets, so he did it. Talk about a prophet and talk about a symbolic, man. How does that figure in today? I mean, how does that work out today? Because today, I'm sorry, but everything looks like a damn transaction. You know, it's like... Um, what kind of uh, alimony and divorce settlement am I going to get if I marry this guy? That's the question before they even marry you. So it's like, and I do think that child support should be awarded solely to the father. The hell with child support. Let the man foot the bill, but give him full custody. And then these so-called family courts, which are nothing more than family destruction courts, they're the destruction courts for families. So that's what I recommend on that. But on the way into Phoenix, the traffic was getting kind of rough. And when I looked up, I saw a billboard. It's like a 12-year-old boy up there, kidnapped by Hamas. And then before I left town, 
uh, these famous talk radio conservative, so-called conservative hosts are talking about, or their guests are talking about, uh, how Hamas uh, puts babies into ovens. Really? Do you believe that stuff? I'm sorry, I don't believe it. Putting children into ovens? Where have I heard that before? And they expect us to believe that? And then here's this 12-year-old boy in color on this wonderful lit up, you know, billboard just outside the bridge on uh, whatever you call that tunnel down on the I-10. And uh, they want you to feel sorry for that child so that you give their permission so that you can they can genocide the, uh, the people in the Gaza Strip. A little over 2 million people. They want to genocide them all. And our troops, by the way, are showing good signs of good judgment. They're refusing the orders. They're refusing the stations of duty. They're in certain countries and they're saying, we don't want to be here. We have no business being here. Biden is not our commander in chief, which they're actually technically right about. I think the man's dead to begin with myself. He was seated illegally. They, they stole the freaking election. I mean, it's horrible. And those men of power and might walk around free after doing that. I'm sorry, but isn't that what we would call treason? Perhaps even high treason? Deserving the ultimate penalty? No, that's not hate speech. I hate the crimes they've committed. I hate the theft of the nation. I hate taking the will of the electorate away. The electorate has not been in charge of this country since Woodrow Wilson was president. You never heard of Woodrow Wilson? Well, he was a little bit before my time. So we're talking about a guy It was more than 100 years ago. And that's where things really got screwed up. That's where a fellow who called himself Colonel Mandel House, who wasn't a colonel at all, he was just a handler. Oh, when I told you, I got my own Jewish handler picked out. So when I'm your benevolent dictator and I seize power, I'm not taking the oath of office. I mean, baby benevolent dictators seize authority and power. We don't take oaths. Hell no. You need a benevolent dictator. You need somebody who's going to dictate to this Congress how to restore, return to its roots. Same to the Senate. It's not a constitutional Senate whatsoever. It's got to go back to its roots. Same to the currency. It's got to go back to its roots. And you're going to have to shut the borders down. Why? Because we've got to stop exporting our theft. That's right. You and I become thieves. This slimy fiat Federal Reserve System has turned us all into liars and thieves and murderers. Frauds. We help perpetuate their fraud. We act like there's some value to those things. And it's not. It's all blood money. Seriously. And I, I got a friend who told me he didn't think they were going to sacrifice the Marines and we weren't going to go to war this time. I, I mean, I was so glad to hear that. First person I've heard say that who, well, who's, who's got common sense. He's a farmer. I'm sorry, but farmers are the smartest people in the world, as far as I'm concerned. They beat the snot out of us with doctorates, us so-called psychologists. Yeah, they're more practical, more pragmatic. And if you want to get good common sense, you don't ask a psychologist, you ask a farmer. Seriously, I've had two good farmer friends, and they knew better than I did on about everything. So I enjoy talking with them. Oh, don't get me wrong. They're respectful, and they remind me too much. I'm a damn psychologist, which, you know, I won't hold them against it. Um, as I tell, well, I had to repeat my profession several times it's part of the IRS uh, whatever it is where they you know when you're pawning large amounts of cash they want to know what you did for a job are you working what are you doing with your money and all this as if I'm not a free man well I can't blame them for looking out for old people I mean, that's what they're doing right they're looking out for my best interest and your best interest especially those physicians oh yeah they want to save lives Bullshit!